Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us here. We are excited that you join us here faithfully each and every week. And we're having a good time interacting in our comment section and just sharing with you the heart of God each and every week. So thank you all. We want you to know we appreciate it. We don't take it for granted um, that you take your time out each week to join with us. So thank you so much for joining us. And if this is your first time, then we welcome you to our CHM YouTube channel, which is also known as Wednesday's Word. We upload new information, new content uh, each and every Wednesday to share from the heart of God to you. So we believe if you're here today for the first time, then God has something in this message that he wants you to have today. So welcome. Will you all make sure that you go ahead and like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button. So you can make sure that you are a part of what we're doing here at the CHM YouTube channel and Wednesday's Word. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we get into the Word, though, I want to just remind you that we have coming up this Friday, we're only a few days away, you all, from our Spring Worship and Word Gathering that's coming up on Friday, May 13th, 7 o'clock p.m. We will be at City Church Memphis, which is at 8200 Macon Road. And we are so excited about this Worship and Word Gathering. It's always a blessing, but we are excited. We have a special guest speaker coming on um, this week, and his name is Pastor Terrence Crockett. He's the pastor of Faith Believers International Church. He and his wife, Kim, together, they pastor that church in Bartlett. And we are so excited of having them with us on Friday night. I, um, I spoke with him today, and he's excited. He's ready for a mighty move of God, and guess what? We are too. And if you are ready for a move of God in your life, then we invite you. We encourage you to join us. Again, that's Friday the 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. at 8200 Macon Road. I promise you, if you come, you will be glad that you did. So let's go ahead and get into our word. We really don't have a long word today, uh, but we're going to um, get started. And, you know, we've been talking over the last few weeks very encouraging and uplifting words the lord has been really since the springtime we've always kind of i felt a shift in what he's had us to share and just getting us ready for the things that he's pouring out in our life in this season and in this new era um last week we talked about um that god told us it was our season of biblical restoration and you know we've said as we studied biblical restoration a few months back just studying what it looked like and what that meant we learned then, it was back in March, that biblical restoration is to receive back more than what has been lost or stolen. Um, so much so to the point that the final state of the situation or the final state of whatever is being restored is so much better than the original state that it was originally is so much better. It's really when God goes above and beyond to recompense his people, to give them the restoration of the things that were lost or stolen in their life and so we talked about that last week and we were pretty excited about it because god had told me that he was going to be restoring to people the years the past seven years 10 years and 12 years of their life and uh, things that had been lost or stolen or diverted from their life god said he's going to be restoring and I think I encourage you all to do what the Lord told me to do, and that was to grab your journals. So I grabbed my journals. I have my journals here um, sitting next to me for the past, for those three segments, for the past seven years, um, the past 12 years, uh, 10 years, and the past 12 years. So I would encourage you to do the same, to get those out, lay it out before God, and uh, communicate with Him. Have a conversation with Him. Talk to Him about it, and asking Him, what does that look like in your life? Uh, what does it look like to have the restoration of the past seven years? You know, when I uh, pulled my journals out and started looking at them, and I was like, okay, God, I remember this. Uh, I remember the, the excitement when the initial promise came in. And uh, I also remember the sinking in my heart when the things didn't seem to come to pass. And so what the Lord wanted me to share with you all today is to hope again. To hope again. Um, the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And what the Lord was showing me is that some of us went through a long period of time of waiting for things. You know, we don't like to wait five minutes for something, let alone seven years, 10 years, or 12 years. 
And what happens is when we wait an extremely long time, um, we get a little disillusioned almost. Um, hope is having a confident expectation that something good is coming your way. You know how it feels when you get that prophetic word and you're all excited and hopeful about it and you're expecting that to, thing to come to pass. And what we, what I have come to learn, the Lord has taught me over the so many years, what happens is the prophetic word comes in, but then there's a process you go through. That prophetic word is prophesying to you from where you are. It's prophesying you into your future. But if you don't know that, you think they're telling you who you are right now in this moment. And I guess in one sense you are because God is showing you from his perspective who you are. And that person that's prophesying that word, he's allowed them to peep into the realm of the spirit and see you the way he sees you. But he's seeing you from his eternal perspective, but he, he's prophesying to you in your earthly realm and letting you know this is really who you are. So there's a process you're going to have to go through to become that thing that God is already saying that you are. And so when we get so hopeful and excited at the announcement or the proclamation of the prophecy, and then it doesn't happen. And so when that happened, if it doesn't come through, when our expectations are delayed over a long period of time, then we do, we begin to experience a frustration, disappointment, and even a loss of hope sometimes. And the Lord was showing me that as we go back through these journals, um, and it's even a caution is what it is. Not a warning, but it is a caution. As you begin to go back through your journals, don't let the fact that you've been waiting seven years, 10 years, or 12 years, don't let that sinking feeling happen. Because that's what I went, as I began to go through some of my journals and I realized, oh God, I remember this prophecy. I was so excited about it and, and was looking forward to it, but didn't know that there was a process I needed to go through. And so when I started to go through the process, it looked anything, it looked like anything but the prophecy. And then disillusionment came in, disappointment, frustration, and eventually in some ways a loss of hope. And so the Lord was telling me and even wanted me to tell you, caution yourself as you go into opening your journals and looking at them. Don't, um, don't let that sinking feeling coming in. Don't let a loss of hope come in again. Because what the Lord is saying now, when you approach your journals, Approach them from the latter part of that verse of Proverbs 13 and 12. Because the first part does say that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the rest of it says, but desires fulfilled is a tree of life. When our longings or our desires are fulfilled, they become a tree of life to us. And that tree of life represents a renewal of life. It's like you get a fresh hope, a fresh excitement, a fresh new outlook and perspective on life. No longer looking at it from um, the sadness of your hope being deferred, but now looking at it from the excitement and the expectation of them now being fulfilled. And so when we do that and our prayers are beginning to get answered, we get excited because we it, it kind of gives us a renewed hope, a revived spirit and a renewed hope because we're beginning to see the things come to pass. You know, like we talked about last week, beginning to see the roses bloom. We're beginning to see that the April showers have now began to bring about May flowers naturally. And we also know that that's what God is doing spiritually. So again, just a caution, just a caution as you approach your journals and begin to look at those and lay that out before God. Approach them from the, the last half of that verse, which is longings fulfilled or desires fulfilled our tree of life. And let that reignite your hope. Let that revive your spirit and give you, again, another hopeful expectation that now these things will come to pass. This time, your hope will not disappoint. This time, your hope will not be deferred, but they will be fulfilled. The Bible says in Isaiah 49 and verse 23, this is God speaking. He says, I am the Lord, for they shall not be put to shame who wait for, look for, hope for and expect me. We can now approach our journals as we lay them out. We can approach our, our prophecies and our dreams. You know, the Lord told me that I shared that prop, that prophetic word with you that these are the days of fulfillment. 
These are the days where our promises are being fulfilled and the prophecies are now coming to pass. And we can approach that because God said again in, in Isaiah 49 and 23, God said, I am God. I am God and those who hope in me will not be put to shame. Your hope will not be disappointed. He said, if you hope for me and you wait on me in expectation, not just waiting for time to pass, but you're waiting in expectation. It's almost like, and this is what he gave me an example he gave me a few years ago to help me to understand that waiting time. He's like, if you're waiting on a bus, nobody drive, rides a bus almost anymore, but if you're waiting on that bus to come, you have the schedule to tell you what time that bus is coming. So you're there at the bus stop waiting. You can either stand up and wait and looking, or you can sit and wait. But in either case, you're waiting and you're looking and you're expecting because you have a schedule to tell you what time to expect that bus to come. And that's the same thing God is saying. You are now in that set time where you can expect and you can begin to look. And um, there's another saying that our hope is really your faith on tiptoes, your faith and expectation. You're looking, you're stretching your neck because you know that God has said now is that time. So I want you to be encouraged as you go through that process of looking through your journals, maybe ask the Lord, give him, ask him to give you some, some clear directive, some, some clear understanding on what to expect. There may be something that you need to do differently. He may give you some new instructions. Now, because ideally from seven, ten, seven years, 10 years or 12 years, you should have grown and matured some spiritually. So there may be some things he can give you more detail on now. So as you approach that, be encouraged that now is the time. God has said these are the days. This is that time. And these things are coming to pass. So as you approach them, approach them with great excitement, great anticipation, and great expectation. Because these are the days of the promises being fulfilled. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, today we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness, and your grace. God, we thank you for your word and that it does not return to you void. Your word, God, always accomplished the purpose that you sent it out to do. Father, it doesn't matter that it's been seven years, 10 years, or even 12 years. It doesn't matter when it's been hundreds of years, God. There are prophecies about Jesus that went out hundreds of years in advance. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about him three years in advance, but that word came to pass. And your word says at the appointed time that you sent your son, born of a woman and born um, as a child. God, it was a set time. Though Isaiah prophesied 300 years in advance, you had a set time. And the same is true now, God. You gave it to your people to prophesy over us. Or you gave it to us yourself and gave us words of prophecy and wisdom. And you gave us dreams and hopes and ambitions, God. And although it may have been a long period of time from a human standpoint, God, you're in eternity and it's nothing but what you say it is. And so now, God, we're excited because you've said that this is the time. And so, God, we approach our uh, journals, we approach these times and seasons, God, not that longing, not that our uh, hope has been deferred, but God, we're grabbing a hold of the last part of that verse with great excitement and great anticipation, knowing that this is the time you have set. Father, I pray you will strengthen each and every one of these, your people that are partaking of this video, God, that they will be encouraged, that they will be excited, God, as they open and lay out the journals before you. Give them fresh perspective. Give them fresh revelation, God, and give them an elevated and an expanded revelation, God, on what you meant then, although they were not able to completely understand it then. Now they've grown, they've matured, they've developed. They're able to have an expanded revelation. Father, lavish it upon us today. Let us know what is our part, God. What is it we need to do? Because we know faith without works is dead. So God, give us what is our part. That we, can, oh, that we can obey God and walk in agreement with you. That we can know God with great anticipation and excitement. You are God. And those who hope and expect and look to you will not be put to shame. We thank you that you are the God of hope. And you flood us now with hope, with joy and peace because we trust in you. And we trust in you alone. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all so much for joining us. Again, be encouraged. Make sure that you are excited about what God is doing because these are the days of fulfillment. So be excited about that. Again, we hope to see you all Friday night, 7 o'clock p.m. at 8200 Worship, 8200 Macon Road for the Worship and Word Gathering. We are so excited for a mighty move of God. We hope to see you there. Love you guys. See you next week.